The purpose of this project is to document the oral histories of former Forest Haven residents. Forest Haven was an institution created by Congress and operated by the District of Columbia government from 1925 to 1991. It was where DC residents with intellectual disabilities were sent to live lives apart and separate from the community. My name is Jabba Phillips. Lived at Foster when I was an infant. I stayed when I stayed at Foster until I was 17 years old. It was rough. It was rough. Treat like dogs. Beat like dogs. It wasn't easy. It was hard. Yeah. It was very hard for me down there. You got to protect yourself down there. If you don't protect yourself, you're going to get beat up. Right. I protect my whole self. Stay. It wasn't good. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. There was no kind of environment good like that down there. It's like it's some of the staff you can get along with, and some staff you can't get along with. My my friend, my staff I had, I had a ball with her. I had a ball, a good ball with her. She, I know when she's not working, cause the counselors didn't know. They know did anybody come out her room? Leave her alone. Y'all know why she ain't come out her room? Her favorite counselor ain't there. Did they have to call her at home? Can you talk to Deb on the phone? Her, tell her to come out of her room because they can clean the room? They said, yo, just leave her room alone. Leave her room alone. I deal with when I get there. When she got there, I came out of my room. I was all right. I know she was there. I know I was protected. She was my, I said, she was more my protection than anybody. That's how I started getting better from her. That was my counsel. Okay, say like when my, when my grandmother can't come get me to bring me home on weekends, she'll come and get me. Come on, you going home with me the weekend. Okay, about Fars Haven, I can speak on it. About Fars Haven, the only thing I like about the whole thing about Fars Haven, we used to play basketball a lot. That was one of my sports, basketball. We can come outside. Store-wise, we go to store once in a while. If your family don't bring you your stuff, it's like that. But every Sunday we have business. Okay. My my uh, grandma would always came. She couldn't make it. She'll call them mm -hmm. and tell them she can't make it that Sunday. Right. They said, just tell my granddad I can't make it. I'm sick. I said, okay. Yeah. That's when I started crying. Because yeah. I'm so used to seeing my grandma on Sunday. My mother, my mother's brother, Jackie, Elizabeth, and Nita. But they ain't know we was some kin though. None of them ain't know we was some kin. We know we was some kin, we all got together here. And that was a hurting feeling to see that. Right in that day, I'm glad I met all my family. Only how I felt I had a mother, it was my grandmother told me. Yeah. See, my grandma said, you got a mother. Mm -hmm. When I did find my, see my mother, mm -hmm. mom, what happened? Right. I'm your daughter. Why you put me down here like this? Right. She said, I can't take care of you right now. Right. I was there on fall saving too. Right. When my grandma told me that, yeah. I just broke down and cried. My grandmother told me. Okay. My grandma said my mother got raped. Okay. And what hurt me more when my grandma told me who did it, I was like two, three. It was my grandfather. It's good to be a villain, but like now, I'm glad I did find my mother. My grandma told me about my mother. Right in the day, I can say it to anybody. Right. I'm glad I got my mama. Glad I got my mama. Since ever since we've been together, my life started changing more and more. Right. Okay, that's so how I felt on the house ready to leave. I was in the cafeteria. Right. I was eating my dinner. I did like this. I 
Because I saw since there was a lot of people around me, something going on. Now, my favorite counselor was there that night. He said, no, nah, Dave, you got to come on go with me. I said, where we going? He going to the office. I went to the office. Went to the office. That's what all of them told me. Dave, you got to go to your college and pack your suckers. You going home. I said, no, I'm not going home. This is my home right here. This is the only home I know. And when I seen my grandmother, that's when I got a little bit bad. I said, I'm going home with my grandmother. And her son came in. He said, where your stuff? I said, my stuff right there. My clothes right there. He says, oh, you got something? He said, don't worry about it. You got a whole full new drawer at home. I went to my grandma's house. I had so much clothes, I didn't know what to do. Know what to do. It was, a, it was a shock to me. It was a surprise to me. But I got used to it after a while. No, I did. it took me a while. It right. took me a while. It took me a while because my grandma had to take me to therapy. Right. Because yeah. every time my grandma would come by, I was fighting her. Because yeah. I didn't know her. Yeah. And then my grandma told her, you can't say what you want to say to her right now because she just come out that place. You got to give her time to. Yeah. I had to get adjusted. Yeah. Leaving from one place and coming to another place, I had to get real adjusted. Yeah. And that was hard for me to get adjusted. Yeah, definitely. I got around all my family. I got behind my grandmother. I said, Grandma, I don't know these people. I don't know these people. That's what my grandma said. Let me tell y'all something. Back up. Let me get her. And her son came and said, y'all let me, let me get her. Let me explain to her who these people is. He told me. And ever since then, I know. And the only thing I hate about that, the whole thing about that, when you get released from down there, and you come to the city, one thing I didn't like, they put on your paperwork, you retarded. That's one thing I, could, I couldn't talk right. about. Right in the day, I, can't, I still can't stand that. Yeah. They clean, you don't, they don't down those, I guess, did I say it right? They don't down those, diagnose you right. I would say this, I do, I know I have a disability, but don't lay me as retarded, and I know I'm not. I don't like that at all. Because if somebody else hear you say retardation, they're going to pick with you and they're going to constantly keep picking it. Yeah. Now I'm glad I learned. I'm, out. I'm glad I'm out of Falls Haven. Because I ain't for nobody to live nowhere. It's like a doghouse. I can get around. I didn't know nothing about DC. Now I know. I know how to go around places where I know how to get around them. Then I, some of the stuff I learned on my own. If I get lost, what I do, I ain't shame to ask nobody which way to go. I have a I have a daughter. And I had been married one time. I was in the seats now. I had my mother. I can go around my family now. I don't have to have nobody to take me around. I will go by myself. I know how to get there. When I go around my family, I had me a ball. And I'm glad to be around my family. Because my family is my backbone now. My daughter is my backbone. She helped me. She, my, my daughter knew I couldn't read that good. I had to call her to fill my papers out. Some of my papers I don't know how to fill out. I still call my daughter. And my daughter come and help me. Like I didn't know how to do since I've been here. I didn't know how to send emails. I know how to do that now. I didn't know how to work on a computer. I didn't know how to work on a spreadsheet. I know now. But I still need help. I'm not going to stop getting the help, but I still need the help. I learned how to get on my own. I, it's like the first job I had. I had more than one job since I've been in D.C. I worked in a nursing home. I did construction. I was in another nursing home. 
worked at Providence Hospital. Providence Hospital was the last job I had, then I came here. Yeah, I work at DDS. I've been at DDS for six years this year. Um, clerical assistants. I'm going to step back and speak up for myself and speak for other people if they are okay to understand. I'm going to speak up for them. Because if you don't know your rights, they're going to take up mind of you. But I will tell anybody, please, and the way I'm glad Fox Haven is closed, because I'm glad they started recognizing us, because they wasn't recognized for 40 something years. They have not recognized for 40 something years, and they just started to recognize We Matter of fact, I don't think it was this year or last year. Year before last, I think we just won our case in court about Far as Haven. By one that um one of the client was um in Far as Haven. She didn't want to help us out a whole lot. I I I came a long ways. I didn't know nothing until we got the help. I learned a lot of stuff and I'm still learning. I hope that they learn, everybody else can learn like I did. You got to crawl before you walk. I just, y'all, I'm putting it like this. I'm glad y'all did it because everybody in the world need to know about this. A lot of people, I'm glad y'all reaching out to us because people don't know. People need to hear us. They need to hear us. They don't, a lot of people don't understand what a lot of people went through with Paul's favor.